Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at absolutely every leak and deleted scene in the history of the digital circus. We'll talk not only about the pilot episode, but also about the new trailer and more. Today we are going to talk about deleted scenes, learn how our favorite show was created, see funny and sometimes scary photos of our characters, and much more. So I suggest you watch this video to the end. First let's take a look at the process of creating Kane's movements. You will immediately notice how detailed our Kane is, even at this early stage and you can see that when he moves, only his arm moves. I wondered for a long time why it was the hand, but if you look closely at even the first scene, it becomes clear that the emphasis of Kane's actions is on the hand. Even the next frame of our cutscene shows how much detail the writers put into that moment. Well, his head movements also make me laugh a lot. Remember the character's first introduction to Kaufmo? Just look at how detailed Kaufmo is, every part of his body has been brought to perfection. But if you look at the original version, you can see that Kaufmo originally looked very different. He was smooth and had some colored spots instead of eyes. There's another interesting detail in this scene that we'll talk about in a few seconds. If you've guessed what I'm talking about, write about it in the comments. Take a closer look at Regatha's movements when she first saw Kaufmo. Her hands were certainly excited, but not enough to stand up. In the original version, the process of her surprise lasts longer than in the final version, and if you look closely at her hand, you can see that it's rising. But for some reason, that element was removed in the final cut. Let's go back to the scene where we meet Kane. We have frames from the original animation of this scene. You can see that Kane has already been created, but if you look closely at his eyes, they seem very strange. One of them is completely blue and the other one is 80% green. And imagine if our administrator still had those eyes. I think he'd be one of the worst characters in the digital circus. And while the heart looks real, the brain looks like used chewing gum. And also these shots prove that the scene with Kane was shot very first, because in the final version we see the territory inside the tent of the digital circus. But in the original version, at the time of the story about the circus, we see only the backstage. And now let's come to the most complicated scene of the whole digital circus. I'm talking about a little fight between Zubal and Jax. You might ask me, what's so hard about that? But take a closer look at Jax's head at that moment. Gooseworks themselves said it took over two weeks just to do that scene. In addition to her, Kevin Temmer and many other animators were involved in the creation of this scene. This is how it turned out when several animators worked together, but as far as I know, Gooseworks did not like the variant with the disappearing head, and it was decided to redo this scene a little bit, which is the final result you see on the screen now. However, Zubel's movements didn't change at all. Now let's take a short break from the video and talk about the various cursed photos that we have accumulated a huge amount of. The first one I want to talk about is Pomni, and this photo perfectly demonstrates the imperfection of the animation in the early stages. Or maybe this photo was shown to use on purpose? Look at the horror of the face in this photo. And the next leak is just as interesting. There are several theories about these unfortunate Pomni shots. Maybe it's just a bad shot during the animation of this scene, but it's not that simple. Like I said, I'm working on several projects at once. Even though Gooseworks told us that they didn't start work on the second episode until after the pilot was released, I don't really believe that. Maybe this is footage of a scene from the new episode, and if that is true, imagine what horrible events they could show us in the future. I mean, for a character to have that creepy grimace on his face would take a lot of effort. What happened to Jax's face? At this point, his eye is attached to his teeth and it looks very creepy, and his face in general leaves a lot to be desired. We also get to see the original version of Jax in this scene. You can see that it was already the final part of the animation preparation. But what interests me the most is this photo. The authors themselves prove that this scene was recreated from an old but very famous meme with a girl and a burning house. Is this just a reference, or does this leak prove something much more important? The girl is very aware of the horror happening around her, but she remains completely calm. And also in her background is a burning house, which even if they can put it out, it will not be the same. And now, look who we have in the shape of the burning house. It's our crazy kinger. Perhaps this is a warning to us that the next abstracted will be this strange chess piece, and even his condition speaks for it. Because even though he has a huge fan base around him that loves and protects him, he is the main candidate for abstraction in the next episode because his mental state is at a critical point that is very easy to cross. And this is just a funny shot of Gangle with her body split in two for some reason. But I'm pretty sure that's just a bad shot of that scene. I can't even explain what's going on in this shot. It's just that Jax has turned into a very strange creature. And the next picture makes us think that Jax is a secret agent of Kane, and all his actions are just orders from our administrator, and all this construction around Jax's face was made so that he could observe all the characters. Of course it's a joke because you can see that all these strange shapes match the different elements of Jax's face and are just the original landmarks of the mouth, eyes, and everything else. Let's take a break from the photos and go into some very interesting details about some of the scenes. 
Probably the most frequent guest of this video is the welcome scene that introduces us to Kane and the circus in general. So I have footage from different angles of that scene. Welcome to the amazing digital circus! My name is Kane, I'm your ringmaster, and I'm here to show you the most jaw-dropping, heart-stopping, mind-bending paraphernalia you've ever laid your eyes upon! Isn't that right, Bubble? That's right, Kane! I can't wait to see what you've got cooking up for today! Well, let's not waste any time! Let's also, I think a lot of people will be interested to see the creation of this scene and the interaction of the characters from different angles. We found the Zubo hole! Cool. <sighs> How is Kofmo doing? I hope he's not still mad at me for not laughing at his jokes. Oh, he's doing great. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen him this happy before. Well, it's good to know he hasn't completely lost his mind. He actually asked me to give you this. Whoa! And to be honest, I couldn't go on living if I didn't show you the first meeting of Pomni and Ragatha with the abstracted Kofmo in its original form. Because at least for the sake of the bald Kofmo, it's worth watching to the end. Might be that terrible thing I was talking about earlier, when you reach your breaking point? Huh? Huh? Okay, wait. Maybe there's still time to fix him before we get Kane. Ah! Oh, whoa! Kofmo! Listen! I know we didn't always get along, like when you called me out for fake laughing at your jokes. I swear I really did think they were funny. I was just having a bit of a bad day. And now let's look at the process of creating this teaser, which is really our introduction to the characters. You can see that Kinger's eyes were originally made completely different from the final result, but all his movements were kept. Zubal also underwent a huge revision because originally her eyelids were supposed to be purple, while in the final version, they are pink. And of course, her body changed from metallic to a beautiful yellow color. We already talked about Kane's eyes, but look at the quality of Bubble. Gangle hasn't changed much either, but it's noticeable that they did a very good job of animating her tears and falling in general. And the scene with Jax and Ragatha, or the introduction scene with Ragatha, is a perfect example of quality post-production, because it is noticeable how Folo was the initial animation of movements and drawing of these characters, but once it came to the final cut, everything became so perfect that I do not even know how it can be repeated. Well, here Pomni decided to present himself as a master dancer, but it looks very funny. These leaks show the animation of our characters' movements, not just the characters, but the abstracted monsters themselves. And I have to tell you, I'm really surprised at how good it all looked even in the original version. And when you look at the same monsters in the final version, you can only applaud the animators of the digital circus. And the Dancing Kinger is the icing on the cake. I just enjoy watching the process. Remember the teaser where Kane showed us the various aspects of the digital circus? It would be a crime not to get it. In the first shot, we see the main part of the circus tent, which contains the castle, balconies, various structures, and of course the staircase that leads us to the mysterious room. We are also shown a very strange room that contains pipes, or what is it? I'll leave it up to you. Write in the comments what you think it is. We are also shown a cellar with a strange black liquid floating on the floor. Could it be water or oil? Lol, of course not. I think this liquid drains the power of our abstracted monsters, forcing them to stay in this basement for the rest of their lives. And we can't do without a dormitory either, but this monster's arm doesn't look much like the one we saw in Kaufmo. I also found a funny leak of Ragatha's face on the internet, if I may say so, because this concept art makes us laugh. But if we think more globally, this leak actually proves to us that there is nothing inside each of the characters. No organs, no tissues, no fluids of any kind. They're just digital shells, but where is their consciousness stored? In one of the images, we see a gangle room or a communal toilet. It's hard to say, because on one side we see a sink and a toilet, but then why are there broken funny masks of gangle hanging around? But if this is her room, why does she need a toilet? Because it's obvious to everyone that she doesn't have a body. Instead, she's just a tape. And why would you need a toilet in a room where even the food is digital? As you can see, this leak has left many questions and few answers. But the main thing here is the number of broken gangle masks. There are eight of them in total, but it's strange that some broken halves are far away from each other. This means that gangle doesn't have two masks, as everyone thought before, but many more. But what I'm about to say will surprise you. It's actually very strange that only the funny masks break, while the sad mask is always intact. Maybe this sad mask is not a mask at all, but Gangle's real face, but the happy masks are the only thing that can cheer her up. Unfortunately, they are very fragile and break at the slightest bump. Now let's talk about the digital circus itself. On one of the leaks, we were shown a map of the area around the circus. You can see a huge lake with a yacht, and next to the circus itself, there is an amusement park. Maybe in the future, in one of the episodes, we will show scenes that take place in these places. 
On this map, you can also see a small wooden building that they are trying very hard to hide from us. I assume that this building is nothing but the mysterious restaurant where Kane and Bubble spent their time, or it is a so-called hotel where the mannequins live, waiting for their moment to become a new inhabitant of the digital circus. Were we really shown some cutscenes from this so-called trailer of the new episode? Recently, one of the animators of the amazing digital circus showed us some of the cutscenes and so-called behind the scenes, and I was very surprised to see how interesting the new episode was. Let me show you all these scenes and we will analyze and look at each of them together. And the first scene is the very beginning of this trailer. Remember how Pomni is sleeping at first and then Kane brutally wakes up our girl. After that, there was a very interesting conversation between them and just this process of this conversation and showed us one of the animators. That's what I like about such videos, that we can learn the original vision of the author on this or that scene. Is that how that normally works? Shut up! I have so much to show you! <laughs> Your little crying face left quite the little crying mark on the internet. Even here, we can see that in the original version of the room, Pomni looked quite different than in the final scene. At least we don't see the curtains that partially cover Pomni's bed. And also originally, it was supposed that Pomni would not have one big pillow, but several small ones. The trailer also showed a fragment that was an exact copy of a scene from the pilot episode. I have so much to show you! <laughs> Your little... However, while in the trailer, we see a perfect transition between locations. In the original version, the transition was supposed to be a full-fledged teleportation through the so-called wormhole. This scene reminds me very much of Pomni's journey through the void. And of course, I can't help but mention the digital circus area, which just looks disgusting. But I have an assumption that this animator simply did not bother with the scenery and focused more on the movements of the characters. Imagine if our The Amazing Digital Circus looked like Kevin Temmers. But what I'm most interested in is where the digital circus tent went. And the beautiful meadow instead of the lake also fascinates me a lot. I'm not even talking about the completely eco-friendly amusement park. Not a single mechanical part, just beautiful green plants. I think Greta Thunberg would be very happy. I've talked a lot about Kane's eyes in the original, and I have to admit that I still can't remember why they look so creepy. Another interesting fact is that Kane's costume is supposed to be yellow on the inside. Similarly, the scene we were shown after the presentation of the new characters, the sky in the background was supposed to look very dark, but in the end they decided to do it in the usual digital circus style. And did you pay attention to Kane's hat? In the final version, it looks with a red stripe, but in the process of creation, the authors assumed that the stripe will be blue. And to be honest, the final version looks a hundred times better. Then we were shown the funniest scene of the whole trailer. I think you have already guessed that I am talking about the moment when Kane turns into a stuffed animal. I see. But it's not just our administrator that's interesting in this scene. Take a closer look at the digital circus tent. In addition to the main building, you can see some sort of small annex next to it. But for some reason, the creators decided to remove this building completely and put huge entrance doors in its place. Kane himself in his plush version looks very strange in the original version. Our Kevin looks as if he just took a PNG image and added it when creating the 3D animation and layered it on top of the main version of Kane. But luckily, in the process of creating the final version of the animation, plush Kane was slightly modified and now looks quite appropriate and cute the great and powerful artificial pet Bubble. What surprised me was that he came right out of Pomni's mouth. I How can we support the production of this cool new show? Great question, Pomni. All merch sales go right back into funding the show and allow us to do bigger and crazier things. Wowee, I've become a pen if it meant getting sold to fund more wacky. And in the original scene, he looks too rough, if I may say so. Just compare the original and the final version. In the original version, Bubble represents some blue substance, while in the final version, Bubble looks like a real soap bubble. Look how beautifully his body shimmers in the sunlight. And then we see Kane. Nothing out of the ordinary happens, but it's important to note that I'm once again disturbed by his eyes. Of course they are not as creepy as before, but now they both have blue circles around them, even though we all know that one of Kane's eyes is green. I think this is just a later version of the trailer where a lot of details have been finalized. Not without commercials these days. And it's also in the trailer. And Kevin Temmer was responsible for that as well. Let's compare the posters from the very beginning of the trailer and the posters from the final version of the trailer. First of all, the bubble poster. Video that in the original version of the poster itself is more dim and our bubble has a large size. And I do not understand why the developers decided to reduce it in the final version. In my opinion, the reduced version of the bubble looks much worse than originally intended. Whereas the Pomni poster did a much better job and all they did was turn our fool around a bit. I'm not even talking about the plush Canes commercial. Now let's talk a little bit about Jax. 
Based on the previous behind the scenes, I realized that Kevin Temmer is responsible for the most complex animations on this character, and this shot was no exception. But I'm very interested to know what this mysterious fast food restaurant is. And using Jax as an example, it is very easy to explain the reason for such a long absence of a new episode. Just compare the original footage and the final version. Of course, such an improvement takes a lot of time and effort. Now let's take a look at some very funny, unfortunate shots that were permanently removed from the trailer of the new episode. And the first scene will be our introduction to the trailer. I can't imagine what happened to Pomni's face, but it's much more interesting to look at Kane's face. Sometimes I get the feeling that the creators are doing this on purpose to amuse us in the future. Kane's return from plush to normal is also accompanied by a weird scene where Kane looks a lot like a robot and it's already very creepy. After watching this video, I think that Kane is definitely a man. Especially after seeing how sensual he dances, I had my doubts. And now we're back to the scene of the Pomni keychain poster. Bubble pin! <laughs> and this Pomni pin! And we can't forget about this! <laughs> we were shown two initial versions, which are very different from the final version. I think there were many more scenes like this, because what we are shown is just the tip of the iceberg of the whole process of creating a digital circus. Now let's talk about the process of creating 3D animation. Let's take a look at the scene in which Pomni, Kane, and Bubble participated. We think that it is not difficult to create such an animation, but just look at how much effort it takes to get Pomni to open his mouth correctly. On top of that, you have to animate the head and body movements correctly, and Bubble has to come out of Pomni's mouth. And then there's the endless attempts to find the best shot. You as a viewer do not know this moment, but I as a content creator can safely say that sometimes for 2-3 seconds of video can take 20 attempts and about 30 minutes. Let me remind you of another fragment from the trailer of the new episode. That how that normally works? Shut up! I have so much to show you! <laughs> In the process of creating this scene, I noticed how detailed the writers are about even small details, like hand movements. In fact, it is such nuances that distinguish a really high quality and successful project from the various garbage created in one day. Well, besides the head, a very important aspect of Kane's movements is the movement of his head. And it seems that even the smallest details such as the contour of the gum are not too important. But our creators try to bring even such things to perfection. And to be honest, they do it very well. Well, the final scene itself was also brought to the best condition. I decided to make you happy and found 95% if not all of the leaks and deleted scenes that have appeared since the pilot episode was released. I'm sure you haven't seen most of them. I hope you enjoy this video because it's really interesting and funny, so I suggest you watch it to the end to see what is not available to the average viewer. Before you start watching, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and write a comment. And here we go. And the first deleted scene is the pilot episode intro. What we got in the end is very different from the original idea of the authors. It's worth mentioning that the early version looks duller, but that's not the main thing. Remember what the original intro sounds like. It is very cheerful and funny, as if we were watching a children's show, while the first version was created more seriously and its jazzy sound makes you think that the digital circus could have originally been created for an older audience. This song is no longer suitable for children's entertainment shows, but sounds like it should be played in serious nightlife venues. Some of you may like the original version, and some of you may like the final version, but let's all admit that the version we saw in the final version fits the mood that Gooseworks and the Glitch Channel team wanted to convey. Let's also remember the moment in the intro, when we are shown the glitches in rotating objects. There is the same line all the time, the day after. This moment was also deliberately cut out in the final cut, and instead, we hear two additional lines. Don't hurry to enter this door, because there are a lot of interesting things inside. And then we hear a warning to be careful, but unfortunately, we don't get to know the continuation, because the words stop at the moment when Pomni pushes the other characters. In our case, the first victim was Jax, followed by all the others. Maybe we're talking about the mysterious door that leads to the secret room. And the warning refers to the fact that no one expected the void to be waiting for us at the end of the last corridor in that room. Just for the record, the original version was voiced by Kevin Temmer, and the final version was voiced by Liz Robinette, for which I thank both of them, because both the original and the final versions, although they look different, both sound very good and very cool. I think a lot of people have seen the next scene, but it would be a crime not to mention it in this video. Just a minute ago, we saw the intro of the pilot episode, but not everyone knows that the initial introduction of the characters was a little different. But because of the timing, it was decided to completely change the introduction of the characters and the first version to make a separate promo for this amazing series. And also for a long time on the internet has been walking around a small animation that shows the walk of all the characters. 
In fact, this leak does not contain any semantic load and was shown to us only as an element of entertainment, because while Jax, Regatha, Gangle, and Pomni go the usual step, Kinger as if gliding on the surface, or flying, here you can decide only you. And his dance, because you can't call it anything else, would definitely become popular on social networks. But the funniest walk is definitely Zubel's walk. Just look how she walks. And in some moments you can see that she constantly tucks her leg, apparently the construction that she is far from perfect. Let's take a little break from the video and take a look at the various leak photos, as we have a huge number of them. In this picture we see mostly different scenes with Regatha from the pilot episode, but there is a very cute version of Regatha hiding in the corner, as I think this is how she looked like as a child when she first joined the digital circus. But it could be that the characters in this place don't age at all, because they're just a digital illusion. Then it's just an early version of Regatha that didn't fit the concept of this series. Apart from Regatha, I found the concept of our missing clown Kaufmo interesting. We see the final image that was supposed to be in the pilot episode, but in addition we were shown a slightly different version that looks really creepy because in this concept, Kaufmo is missing fingers and toes. Yes, and in general, this character would evoke more negative and scary emotions rather than joy and positivity. Now let's take a quick look at how the digital circus scenes were created before the animation began. In this leak, we see a scene where Pomni has just entered the digital circus and doesn't understand anything yet. I think you immediately realized what specific scene this was. By the way, remember the moment when Jax, Pomni, and Regatha open the door to Kaufmo's room? It's a really cool and well-done scene with a lot of different details that are nice to see, but just look at the prototype of this scene. Some exit text, some lines, and a very abstract room. What I'm about to show you is not really a cut scene, more of a teaser, but since not everyone has seen it, I'd like to talk about it a bit. Take Take a closer look at Pomni and notice the color of her skin. In the teaser, it looks human-like, while in the final version, Pomni's color is completely white, and Gooseworks themselves admitted that this difference in skin color is their mistake. So if everything turns out as originally planned, we would never see Pomni's usual image. Also in the teaser, there is a scene where Kane, as a real villain, throws knives at Pomni, and unfortunately, some of them hit our poor Pomni. But as we can see, she doesn't feel anything but fear, which proves my old theory that the characters of the digital circus don't feel physical pain, but mostly suffer from mental problems and psychological pressure. After all, even in this scene, Pomni feels humiliated, which is what makes her feel so bad. And while we're talking about Kane, I want to show you his early concepts. In addition to the usual image, you can see some very, very strange images. For example, in this part of the concept, you can see Kane with three eyes and a child's toy in the shape of a bird flying out of his mouth. Usually such toys scream very loudly, so theoretically this Kane could appear unexpectedly for his fun and scare all the inhabitants of the circus very much. But the creepiest thing is this picture of Kane. Not only are his eyes above his mouth, which is very unusual, but look at them. They're completely different, as if Kane stole someone else's eye. Fortunately for us, the final image of Kane was very harmonious and fit the concept of the show. I can't imagine what would have happened if that creepy creature had been confirmed. Now let's talk about the digital circus itself. On one of the leaks we were shown a map of the area around the circus. A huge lake with a yacht immediately catches our eye. And there is also an amusement park near the circus. Maybe in the future we will see scenes that take place in these places in one of the episodes. On this map, you can also see a small wooden building that is not immediately obvious. I assume that this building is nothing but the mysterious restaurant where Kane and Bubble spent their time, or it is a so-called hotel where the mannequins live, waiting for their moment to become a new inhabitant of the digital circus. And of course, let's not forget our court jester Pomni. I found some very interesting leaks for you, one of which shows us a funny shot during the creation of the animation. Something is clearly wrong with Pomni. Well, everyone also remembers Pomni's escape scene from Abstract Kaufmo and the moment when Pomni approached the mirror. At that moment, we see Pomni as a nice girl, but originally it was supposed to be different. In this leak, we get probably the creepiest version of Pomni we've ever seen. Well, we've already talked about Pomni being stretched out on a cross a few times in my previous videos, and the fact that it's just a reference to Jesus Christ is probably known to 90% of the viewers. That's it, unfortunately. But I have enough material for one more. Write in the comments what was the most interesting thing you saw. Well, it's time for me to wish you good luck and success, 